with Deadline just a couple of weeks away, would NXT build towards that, or would Rampage take the lead again? Tune in to find out, it's going to be a good one. Roll intro. Hello everyone and welcome back to the show, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dan DP, or as we all know on this channel, D P Z. Yeah. Uh, welcome, welcome to HW Show Squared, the show where we take the usual format of the HW Show, which is now defunct, and expand it to the power of, you guessed it, two. Uh, as I already, I'm Dan, and before we get into things, let the you know the editing magic of the movies and of and of YouTube uh, enable us to be encapsulated and. In box that word embedded uh, into you know my box. So without any further ado, let's go with this. There we go. Uh, before we get any further into it, um, I want to take a moment to just you know thank everyone for their involvement and thank everyone for their engagement, likes, subscriptions, stuff like that. Comments as well because helps to know what you guys want to see and what you guys don't want to see, etc. But Regards to that of YouTube, uh, please also give us a check, get, check us out, sorry, and give us a follow on the button above my head, uh, which are, I keep forgetting what I'm phrasing, uh, our Twitch, HW Show, our Twitter, HW Show, Facebook, the HW Show for Spaces, <clears throat> Instagram and Threads, HW Show, no spaces. Uh, but without any further ado, let's get into the reviews themselves of NXT and the fan page. Let's go. So we kick things off on NXT with the NXT Heritage Cup Trophy Championship, whatever it's called, I don't know. But we start off with that. Noam Dar, champion, defends against Chad Gable, a match that was set up last week. Uh, I'm, I'm going to run through the rounds basically and just see what happens. Uh, round 1 sees a lot of solid catch style wrestling between the two of them, but Chad has the upper hand, but there is no winner ultimately in this round. Round two is won by Noam Dar following a Nova Roller, uh, following an interference by Aura Mensa. And that's 1 0 to Noam. Round three is taken up by an ad break. So, you know, they, it got missed essentially. Uh, from what I said, no one got the win on that round, so it was still 1 0. Uh, round four is also won by no one, uh, but it's fairly back and forth. No, no real advantage for either man in this one, uh, so still 1 0 Noam. Uh, round 5 is won by Chad Gable, following a Chaos Theory, so that's 1-1. One, one. Uh, no Abner attacks Chad after the bell. And then the final round is quite a controversial one, as No Abner does tap out to an ankle lock, however, it's just after the time limit. Uh, so, Harry Cup show, a 1-1, one, one, it ends on a draw, a tie. The title does not change hands, the trophy does not change hands, which means No Abner is still your Heritage Cup Trophy Champion thing. Uh, I rated this three and a half stars. As we all know by now, I love the Heritage Cup rules, the British rounds matches, and they're, they're so unique, and especially when you have someone like Chad Gable in it, and Chad Gable is an excellent wrestler, I love watching the wrestle. Uh, it just adds to the heritage, pardon the pun, uh, of the trophy and, and the defences involved there with it. Um... Going forward, I imagine we'll get more from Chad Gable at Upper Academy, just because it wasn't, you know, a definitive win. Um, but yeah, um, we go on to a vignette now. Uh, Tony D'Angelo and Stax visit a restaurant with their tag titles, because apparently you just go everywhere with a title on your shoulder or around your waist, because that's just what you do. Um, they seem to know the owner though. Uh, there's a prize by a surprise dinner with the rest of the family or. Lieutenants or uh, Capos, I don't know what the word is, but basically it's that members of the family essentially. Um, we're on backstage now. Uh, Carmelo Hayes is joined by Trick Williams. Trick reminds us that he has qualified for the Iron Survivor. Don't know why. Uh, Carmelo says that he needs to win, but he can't sleep on Josh Briggs. Trick wants to accompany Carmelo, but Carmelo isn't thinking about that. He needs to do it solo. Trick has no problem with this and agrees. Seems that things are okay between the two of them now. Bit odd, bit random, but okay. Uh, 
Move on now to the NXT Women's Championship match. Lyra Valkyria and Zaya. Oh, never mind. Lyra's jumped by Zaya before the match begins. And a minute to see into Lyra on the stage. The match does not happen. Uh, we go to a match now. Uh, apparently, they need to call an audible. Um, and it's now a tag match. So, Edris Anove and Manic Blade against Angel Garza and Humberto Camillo. Uh, Angel and Humberto win with a combination pop up kick to the chest or rib region of Edris. Uh, I wrote this two and three quarter stars. It was a short match, but it served a purpose. It really only served one purpose, and that was to get Angel and Humberto over. <laughs> Um, I don't think it helped Edris and Manic much, though I wouldn't say it was a squash. Both teams did get their licks in. It was it was alright. It was just it was just having a shout about, you know. Um, backstage, uh, Briggs wants to be by himself in his match against Carmelo. Fallon, uh, Henley, and Brooks Jensen want to accompany him, but he does not want them. Moving on to the eyes of other qualifier match between Carmelo Hayes and Josh Briggs. And in a rather upsetting match, uh, upsetting match, upsetting result, sorry, uh, upset of a result is what I meant to say, Josh Briggs wins with a moonsault following interference from Lexus King. Quite rate is three and a half stars. Apart from the interference ending, this was a very solid match. I really enjoyed it. I don't know if it's because of Carmelo, and, you know, Melo don't miss, or because I've not seen much of Briggs outside of, you know, a tag team setting. But this is this was very good, and while I don't, well, and why I, I I do get some won't be too pleased about Bruce's involvement in this match. That setting particularly, the Eye Survivor itself, particularly allows for a breakout star to emerge. Uh, I'm thinking that will be Bruce this year. He's got a lot going for him, and it's just that he's taking a tag team that holds him back. Uh, I'm saying that off of one singles performance from him, uh, but we'll see, I guess. Uh, I think I'm right. There you go. Um, after that, we get a very strange vignette. Um, so we're showing a house, doorbell rings. It's Von Wagner. He's got he's a pro, he's gone to Mister Stone's house. Uh, we see Stone's wife. We see his kids. Uh, and then we go to dinner, and there's some sort of like spaghetti and sausage meatballs or whatever they are. Um, which was okay, I guess. Um, one thing I want to bring up, and I don't want to start anything with this uh but i don't wanna, i don't want to think too much into it but the kids act and look a bit like von so part of me is thinking are they von's kids is there something being hidden there that we don't necessarily know about just for just just you know just who thought just who thought just something that popped in my head what during this very weird segment I have no idea why it was there to show their bonding when they're already quite a close tandem. So, strange. Anyway, back to the ring. Here comes Wesley. What does he want? He wants another shot and a North American title. Cool. Here comes Dominic to confront Wes. Uh, Dominic talks down to Wesley, basically saying, hey, you're a failure. Listen to all the things he's done wrong. Wes says he's willing to do anything and everything to get the title back. Dominic announces that Wes will have to go through a gauntlet of three former North American champions to get Dominic a deadline. And then Wes accepts the challenge. Who approved this? Where's Shawn Michaels to approve this? There's no one here. Dominic just said, hey, if you're going to fight X, X, and X. And Wes is like, okay. And then it's like, it's official. It's No one officiated it. Is Dominic now a GM? What, what is this? Um, we get an update on the Chase U scandal, uh, which wasn't a recap. It was, it was, it was, it was just a recap of what's happening, and uh, Andre Chase will break his silence uh, next week. Uh, backstage still, uh, Jesse Jane is here with Fia Hale. Uh, Jason gives Fia a pep talk, and it seems to receive it well. Fia, so good stuff. Uh, backstage, uh, Bridges. Briggs is happy with his win, as you would be, when Tiffany Stratton, of all people, comes to congratulate him. She, 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 she doesn't hang around long, and Briggs is met by Brooks and Fallon. Fallon is not happy that Tiffany was here. We go into another Iron Survivor qualifier, but this time for the women. We have Blair Dun Davenport and Fear Hale. Uh, Blair wins with a stiff knee to Fear's face. Uh, I rate it as two and three quarter starts. It was just too short. 
I, 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 I'm happy with the result, but I want it a bit more for both of them. It is what it is, I guess. Uh, but this whole Chase U stuff is obviously a distraction and it affected fear enough for Blair to take advantage. So we may well get more info on that and hopefully a resolution to this because Chase U needs to, you know, band together again. We need to come back, be strong as ever. Chase U. Chase U. Um, we on to another match. Uh, Chai Dempsey takes on Eddie Thorpe. Uh, Eddie Thorpe wins with the surprise flash pin. Uh, post match, Gulak and Bourne uh, jump in the ring <clears throat> to beat down on Bourne, and all three pose above Eddie. I rated this two and a half stars. This was the weakest match by far on this card. I got a lot of average meh in this from this match, and it was basically a squash match until the very end. Uh, it was fine. I get why it was there, but it probably needed a bit more to it or a bit more fleshing out. I don't know. Um, go back to the family restaurant dinner thing. Uh, with the family, Tony and Stacks. Tony receives a few envelopes of money from his various carpos or whatever they're called, uh, for whatever services that were rendered by the family. Uh, they go to leave and are chatting in a parking lot, which is a lot like the NXT parking lot, just saying, uh, when they're jumped by Angel and Humberto, uh, who don't actually who don't actually take the tag titles. So I don't get what the point was of that. Weird. Anyway, we go on to the main event of the night, which is for the NXT Women's Championship. For real this time. Uh, it's Lyra Valkyria and Zaya Lee. Uh, Lyra wins and retains with a Samoan driver. I'm not sure if she's got a name for it yet. It's, it's like a Samoan... It's like a fireman's... A fireman's carry spin out into a screwdriver. Um... I don't know what to call it. Uh, anyway, I rated it three stars. Uh, it was a solid match and a solid title defense was lot for Lyra here. Zaya proved to be a formidable opponent despite not being presented in the biggest of spotlights in WWE. I know people will say, you know, oh, she had a good match with Becky on Raw. But let's be honest, I don't watch Raw. Or at least I don't watch everything on it. So I probably missed this when I saw Zaya was going to be involved in the match. Um, I will go back and watch it now, but... This was a really good match that I didn't think it would be. And it only helped Lyra with her with her reign as champion. It also helped Zaya just show what she's capable, capable of doing and put on a good show. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens next week with Lyra's title reign, though. And that was the end of NXT. Overall, good show. Keep building the deadline and, you know, keep going along that track to get there. Speaking of track, time to get into Rampage. Whoa, okay, Rampage. Um, Hook takes on Rocky Romero, keeping keep his off straight with a match. Uh, Hook wins with the Red Rum submission. I rated it three and a quarter stars. By Hook standards, this, is, this, was, this was a good match. Hook's moveset is often called limited, and I agree for the most part. Um, but for someone who's been in AW on main TV as well, for well over a year at this point, he should have developed more than he has, which is not much. But saying that, maybe, maybe he keeps it in reserve. Because this is a much better performance by Hook than most. Maybe it helped that there was someone like Rocky Romero on the other side of the ring. Because the match was good. It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't predictable either. Uh, and there are moments where I thought Rocky might actually win. So, yeah. Very good stuff. Good stuff, guys. Uh, move on to Chris Statlander and Diamante. Again, no bullshit in between. Nothing like that. It's just match, match. Uh, Chris Statlander wins with the Discus Lariat. Uh, I rate this three and a half stars. Uh, this, this was a really good showcase between these two women. It helped give Chris a rebound win after losing the TBS title. Plus, it also helped Diamante look really good in her performance. Only was into a flash move. Uh, a great mix of styles here with Statlander's technical prowess that she no doubt got from hanging out Sparta a lot. Uh, and Diamante's rough, stiff offense, which she already had. But being alive with someone like Mercedes, Mercedes Martinez allows for you know that extra edge to be on there. I'm glad the match wasn't treated like it was a foregone conclusion though for most people including myself we probably all knew Chris was going to win but thankfully it wasn't so one-sided um post-match um post-match uh Mercedes Martinez comes in attacks Chris and then Willow Nightingale make, make, make the save and we're building to that collision main event maybe I don't know what the plan is to be perfectly honest 
So if anyone else. Um, um Moving on. Um we have the Kingdom taking on Duke Davis and Danny Jones. No, not 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 that Danny Jones, but I do love his agree souls. Um Kingdom win after Navarro Borealis on Jones. Uh I didn't make this. It was a squash. Uh very well done, I must admit. But a squash regardless. Uh, Kingdom get a win and continue, continue on their route to try and get those Ring of Honor Tag Team titles. Uh, they are they are in favour and supporting of No Neck November. Come on, come on. Um, and yeah, they call it of the Devil, and that's about and that's about, that's that's how it really. Um, and we want now to the main event of Rampage, which was for the Ring of Honor Pure Championship. Challenger Wheelie Yuta and champion Katsuyori Shibata. Yuta wins and he is the new pure, we want a pure champion with the seatbelt pin movie does. Uh, I rate it three stars. Um, it was a good match as pure rule matches tend to be, but it's just a little deflating that Yuta is the guy to beat Shibata. I get Shibata win hasn't been that great. He's, he's had good matches, but the, the ratings have been a bit lackluster. Uh, and a, you know, a bit of overexposure for me as well for Shibata because Shibata was that sort of guy who you wouldn't see all the time. And after he retired, it was it sort of sucked to not see him again. And now he's come back, but now he's doing semi regular appearances again, which is great for him. But ultimately, it kind of ruined the appeal for me of Shibata. He's still a good wrestler, I don't mind seeing him, but it's like I prefer Suzuki because Suzuki doesn't appear every week, and it's something that you look forward to seeing when he's announced. Um, I, I like that. I like that. I like the absence. You know, like absence, absence makes make, make the heart grow fonder. I I am a huge advocate for that saying because I prefer it when people aren't on TV every week. That's how I prefer my wrestling personally. And that's rotation, having people off, be featured and stuff, and move on. You know, it look, it look, it look, it's, it's really good, in my opinion. But regardless of that, uh, you getting the belt makes sense as you can be around weekly, and obviously Shibata has to go back to Japan for personal reasons, which is. Absolutely up to him. But you will be around on a more frequent basis, so I get why it was done. But I don't know if it was worth taking about off Shibata. And with that, Rampage was finished. So a little three hours there. Rampage was linked to the collision, but we're not doing collision because collision was part of the main show. Uh collision uh is now two hours that I don't want to sit through. <laughs> um but yeah. Uh, that brought an end to Rampage, and that brought an end to NXT, and that brought an end to HW Show Squared, episode 17, I think it is. Um, so yeah, I've been doing this now for coming on four months. Uh, going strong. Uh, it is just me, and it is probably always going to be just me. Uh, we'll see in the future. I might get some guest stars every now and then, but for the most part, it'll be just me. But yeah. Uh, hope you enjoy your days. I've been Dan DP D P Z. Uh, and remember, just to you know, give us a follow, subscription if you like what you see, and if you don't, then <laughs> anyway, catch you in the next one. Peace. With Survivor Series just around the bend, would NXT put on a good show, or would Rampage take the biscuit? That's fine. With Survivor Series just around the corner, would NXT put on? No. With Deadline just around the corner? No. no that's the one, is it? With Deadline, just a few couple, just a. Uh...